Sapphire Motocross World Championship burst into life under the floodlights of the MXGP of Qatar. MX2 race one, it was Paul Jonas who grabbed the first foxhole shot of the season. Behind him was Thomas Kier Olsen, Jorge Prado. Title favourite Jeremy Siwa fell at the end of the first lap from inside the top 10 would remount in 25th position but the man on charge was the 33 of Julian Lieber. He made that pass on Prado to get himself in the second and then went after the race leader Paul Jonas. Thomas Kier Olsen also barged his way through past Prado to get himself in the third but then Lieber fell just as he caught Jonas. He lost two positions to Thomas Kier Olsen and Benoit Pacharel. He found his way past Thomas Kier Olsen in the later stages of the race, but couldn't do anything about Benoit Pacharel, who went after Jonas in a battle for the lead. But there were just one or two mistakes creeping in to the Frenchman's game. In the end, it was Jonas who was victorious in race one from Pacharel and Lieber. who grabbed the fox hole shot behind him all the rest of the best including the two hrc hondas of boroshev and geyser but they touched and geyser almost went down as they challenged for second that allowed to to sneak through into third momentarily but it wasn't long before geyser was back on the charge Jeffrey Hurlings, injured, was riding wounded. He was running six for a while, but then made a mistake on the landing of one of the jumps, ran wide and lost a whole load of positions. Eventually, he had come home down in 18th in his first MXGP race. Max Nagel wasn't having a great time. He was passed by Arno Tonus, number four. Tonus came home seventh. Nagel would eventually come home in eighth, but Tassel was having a great ride. He was placed second. Behind him, the Hondas were at it again. Geiser this time charged down the inside of Bobrashev to snatch third with four laps to go, but it was Tony Cairoli who was victorious in race one from Tassel and Geiser. Race two, and this time it was Thomas Covington who grabbed the fox hole shot on the Husqvarna. His race was soon over, though, as he fell from fifth with a mechanical problem. Samuele Bernardini tagged bars with one of the Honda riders out there, Chervelin. He went down out of a top ten position, and that was going to cost him dearly in terms of a good overall classification on the TM. Benoit Pacharel charged up the inside of... Thomas Kier Olsen to move into second, pushing the Dane back into third, and once again went after Jonas, the race leader. And just like race one, Julian Lieber was soon into third with this pass on Thomas Kier Olsen. And then he too went after Benoit Pacharel. And they both started to close in on Jonas. Whoever won the race was going to be the overall victor for the first time. But Benoit Pacharel made a mistake with a lap to go, handing the race win and the overall victory to Paul's Jonas. Pacharel was second, Julian Lieber was third, Thomas Kier Olsen was fourth, exactly the same as it was in Moto number one, and they were your top finishers here in Qatar. Of course, Jonas now leads the championship going into round two in Indonesia, and he holds the red plate as the championship leader in MX2 for the first time, and he left here Following on in the footsteps of Jeffrey Hurlings, KTM have never lost in Qatar. Yeah, you no, know, coming to this race, I just wanted to do two consistent models and uh, yeah, I just tried to take off the pressure of my shoulders and just ride my own race. And uh, I managed to get two really good starts and uh, yeah, I just managed also to stay calm and didn't make any big mistakes, so stayed in the lead for uh, and two more wins. First overall, that's just amazing feeling, you know. GP race two. Tony Cairoli thought he grabbed another Fox hole shot, but he had a bobble as he came into the turn, allowing Roman Fevre up the inside on the Yamaha for the first Fox hole shot of the year for the 461 and former champion. Tim Geiser soon grabbed the lead though with great drive around the outside at turn two, pushing Fevre into second. Cairoli was third, Paulan fourth, with Koldenhoff and DeSalle also challenging. Cairoli stole down the inside of Fevre to get himself into second. Fevre found his way past Dassault to go into third. 
early on in the race as well. So it was all swaps and changes at the head of the field. Gauthier Paulin was comfortable in fifth. Van Horbeek, 89, was comfortable in sixth. So too, Bobrashev in seventh. Those two guys, or three guys, not really making any inroads into each other. Tim Geiser, though, had about a four-second advantage at one stage, but Tony Cairoli closed him in in the last couple of laps. And with two to go, he went around the outside and then down the inside of the defending champion to take the lead away in the dying moments of race two. Tony Cairoli left here a double race winner. It was his first victory in Qatar. Geiser was second, Fevre was third, and the podium was Cairoli, Geiser and DeSalle. And for Tony Cairoli, that red plate back on the front of that Red Bull KTM for the first time in two years. In fact, since he was here last we'll in 2015 as a defending champion. The race was, uh, was very tough, uh, but you know, for sure we'll be more fit uh, for the next one. Uh, for sure, uh, I'm really happy about this double victory. It was, uh, I don't know, well, uh, like uh, to have the red plate back on the bike, how it feels, but uh, you know, two long years, but uh, we tried to keep it now.